it's true that some people define God as pure consciousness or as being synonymous with the laws of nature. Uh, but if we talk about consciousness and the laws of nature, we won't be talking about the God that most of our neighbors believe in, which is a personal God who hears our prayers and occasionally answers them. So I just want you to be sensitive to this, because either if Michael or I say something derogatory about Islam or Christianity, which seems possible, <laughs> uh, the, the response from the other side shouldn't mention quantum mechanics. And, and, it, and it shouldn't reference a, a, a notion of God that is so denuded of doctrine as to more or less be synonymous with pure mystery or pure information or pure energy or pure anything. Um, so I just want to, I wanted to plant a flag there where you all can see it. Because, because the God that our neighbors believe in is essentially an invisible person. He's a creator deity who created the universe to have a relationship with one species of primate. Lucky us. <laughs> and and he, he's, got, he's got galaxy upon galaxy to attend to, but he's especially concerned with what we do, and, and he's especially concerned with what we do while naked. <laughs> He almost certainly disapproves of homosexuality. And he's created this, this cosmos as a vast laboratory in which to test our powers of credulity. And the test is this. Can you believe in this God on bad evidence? Which is to say on faith. And, and if you can, you will win an eternity of happiness after you die. And it's precisely this sort of God and this sort of scheme that you must believe in if you're going to have a, a, any kind of future in politics in this country. A, no matter what's your gifts, I mean, you could be, you could be an, an unprecedented genius. You could look like George Clooney. You could have a billion dollars, and you could have the social skills of Oprah. And you are going nowhere in politics in this country unless you believe in that sort of God. Uh, I'd like to take a, a moment, as many people have, to just acknowledge the void that is left by the death of our friend Hitch. While it, it might be possible to guess what he would have thought about a number of the topics raised here, it's almost impossible to imagine how well he would have expressed those thoughts. Uh, I mean, the man had more wit and style and substance than a few civilizations I could name. <laughs> uh, Many people claim to find it impossible to believe or to imagine that they won't exist after death. Um, just try it for a second. I mean, you, you imagine that everyone in Paris right now is getting along fine without all of us. I mean, none of us are in Paris. We are really, really materially absent from whatever is going on in every other city on this planet right now. Uh, you are absent for all of human history before your birth. Uh, the idea that you, that you simply can't imagine not existing after death is really kind of a, just for lack of trying, I think. <laughs> the deeper point here, and this is where the whole style uh, and content of what you're saying is so deeply unscientific, is that there's not a, there's not a physicist sitting on this stage right now. Okay, I would never be tempted to lecture a room full of a thousand people at Caltech about physics. I'm not a physicist. You're not a physicist. And, and, and basically every sentence demonstrates that, that you speak on the subject. Now, to not believe in God is to know that it falls to us to make the world a better place. I mean, we, we have barely emerged from centuries of, of barbarism. It's not, it's not a surprise that there are shocking inequities in this world. It, it is hard work to, to climb down out of the trees, walk upright, and build a viable global civilization when you, when you start with technology that's made of rocks and sticks and fur. And this, is, this, is, this is a project, and, and progress is difficult. It, just, just picture going back a hundred generations. 
within your own family. I mean, just picture, picture it kind of mapped onto this room, maybe this, this front row. Just a hundred people. Your father's fathers, mother's fathers, mother's fathers, fathers, on back. Now, I don't, I don't care how cultured you are, what, how well educated your family. You can be Matthew Chapman, whose great great grandfather was Charles Darwin. But if you just keep going, in no more than a hundred conversations, you are going to meet someone who thinks that sacrificing your firstborn child just might be a good way to control the weather. It, we, it, it is. Some of you probably don't have to go back quite that far. <laughs> you just have to go home for Christmas. Okay, if you're going to say that, that non-locality is, is, is an operable principle in neuroscience, that is woo-woo right now it's in neuroscience. Not. It's that, a that is their principle in morphogenesis and differentiation. It's a principle in the workings of the pacemaker of your heart, where a hundred pacemaker not, cells it's fire not simultaneously, it's just, it's just not non-locally. A sur- a saying it louder and, and relentlessly is not going to make it true. <laughs> uh, the great irony of, of the popular conception of sci- science as arrogant is that when you go to a scientific meeting, you, you, don't, you don't see arrogance. I mean, you're, you're about as likely to see real arrogance as you're likely to see nudity at a scientific conference. I mean, this is, this is people are constantly uh, offering caveats and hedges toward what they say. They, 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 every, every statement is couched in, I'm sure there's someone in the room who knows more about this than me, but because everyone is desperate to avoid public embarrassment. Now, this seems to be something you're not uh, doing. <laughs> okay, just, th- just think about the Muslims at this moment who are blowing themselves up, okay, convinced that they are agents of God's will. There is absolutely nothing that Dr. Craig can, s- can say against their behavior in moral terms, apart from his own faith-based claim that they're praying to the wrong God. If they had the right God, what they were doing would be good on divine command theory. Now, I'm obviously not saying that all the Dr. Craig or all religious people are psychopaths and psychotics, but this to me is the, is the true horror of religion. Okay, it allows perfectly decent and sane people to believe by the billions what only lunatics could believe on their own. Okay, if you wake up tomorrow morning thinking that saying a few Latin words over your pancakes is going to turn them into the body of Elvis Presley, okay, you have lost your mind. Okay. But if you think more or less the same thing about a cracker and the body of Jesus, you're just a Catholic. I think you've put enough on the table. That okay. Got, all, so. None of those are scientific evidence. Ma- many of those, ma- many yeah. of those claims trespass upon the territory of science overtly. I mean, the claim about mm-hmm. your, your understanding other human beings being suggestive of a divine mm-hmm. artificer. Is that uh, a scientific claim? Absolutely. I mean, is your understanding of mathematics also suggestive of a divine art- artificer? No, it has to do with my experience. Your ability to learn language. Do you understand? It has to do with my experience of you. When I'm looking at you right now, right. you may assume that what I see is a material, but that's not what I see, and it's not what I believe. And I think I, I understand it's not what you there's believe. There's something in you that is more than you believe. I really think so. This is now, a, if you want if you want to make that if you want to make that a scientific claim, you can. But I'm telling you, it's a metaphysical claim, and to confuse the two is a mistake. Okay, you you can add any metaphysics you want. Thank you. In, in, in that, by that means, I mean I, I can say I, you know I see you as um, reincar- a reincarnate personality, and I think you were probably uh, I was in, uh, on Atlantis. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Don't make um, me like a washerwoman in a pe- people. <laughs> People th- do this all the time. I mean, you, you can broadcast. I mean, this is this is constrained by our common sense in every other domain of discourse. I mean, just take for example the people who think Elvis is still alive. Okay, what what's wrong with this claim? I mean, why is this claim not vitiating our academic departments and corporations? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll tell you why, and it's it's very simple. We have not passed laws against believing Elvis is still alive. It just, the problem is that whenever 
whenever somebody seriously represents his belief that Elvis is still alive in a conversation, in, in, on a first date, at a lecture, at a job interview, mm -hmm. uh, he immediately pays a price. Yeah. Yeah. He pays a price in ill-concealed laughter. Right. Now, now, surely you can agree with that. That, that, that is a good thing. Now, he can, now, then he could rattle on about, this is not a scientific claim. Uh, this is a matter of faith. You know, when I look at you, I, I see you might be Elvis. I mean, he, he, could, he could do this. <laughs>